Caitlin. And then the only time we'll see some pivots. They did banish in last time as well, TSM. Technically, you don't have to change a whole lot. You're already stomping Unicorns of Love, so... Uh, Unicorn's sticking to the same bands as well. Is that an R first pick? I do think it's a good little pivot here to start targeting Biofrost, though, because Biofrost has really been showing up, uh, especially in this series, but all tournament as well. I mean, the problem is you give him Thresh again. So, yes, you do target his great defensive support, but... Uh, he looked very good on Thresh in that last game, and he can do exactly the same in this one. You can just go Gragas Thresh for TSM after they are done hovering every single champion that Unicorns likes to play. What I liked about the uh, brief hovers there is that Exile has actually played relatively well in the laning phase. Give me Zyra Khan. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I think you need to just go back to something you're super comfortable on that you know you can force uh, engages with and then simply go back to game one without the aggressive tower dives. Obviously, yeah. last game they got completely outplayed in the early game. You couldn't really change that a whole lot. Honestly, this series is coming down to Korean advice. Play better, basically, because yes. they're <laughs> drafting very advice. similar, and it's actually true. <laughs> Let's see if Unicorns can do it. Svenskeren locks in the car, Zix, and going to go back to that exile point. Definitely not being soloed out um, as early, but gameplay has happened in the top and bottom lane respectively. So let's see what happens in phase two. So with all the jungle focus, Gragas gone, Kha'Zix, Ivern, we might see Rek'Sai come in for Xerxes. It's been the, the pick for him where he could be really aggressive. He's not a Lee Sin player, so he's mm -hmm. not going to pick that. If he is going for like a ganking jungler, it is Rek'Sai. Uh, there's, of course, the Hecarim, uh, which also is an option for him. I think the Hecarim's a little bit too slow for for this, uh, and they kind of need something like maybe the Warwick uh, Another one. can actually have a bit earlier impact. And Warwick, especially with the blood, blood scent, can actually traverse the map very quickly. So, uh, you know, you can kind of get to problem areas very quickly, and that might help Unicorns react quicker. Yeah, I think it's just it's a matter of, uh, you know, Unicorn strategy going into this game. Uh, if they think they need early aggression, then it is, you know, we're looking at Warwick I, Rexxar. I'm not even thinking early aggression. I'm thinking early defenses so that you don't I, get so far behind. <laughs> I guess that is one thing. Uh, obviously, otherwise, if they do go Hecarim, it's because they're saying we are confident in the scaling. <laughs> and yes, despite two games, it went wrong. They, they believe they can oh, fix that for the third game. Try, try again. Yep, I love the optimism. Let's see what Unicorns decide to do. A lot of mid lane focus in phase two. Cassio, Oreo, Syndra taken off the table. Double lift and uh, Bjergsen, the last two members, to lock in their roles. I mean, Corky is still available. Uh, we saw Exile play that last time as a fine uh, blind pick for Unicorns. The Ash, a third time for Doublelift. Why change it? It's been actually very successful. And what's the reply? Corky and something else? Corky and Warwick? Corky and Rek'Sai? I mean, that's, it literally just depends on what they want to do with their jungle. If they want scaling, we're looking at Hecarim. If they want early ganks, we're looking at Rek'Sai. If they want dueling power, we're looking at Warwick. Like, there's enough options for Xerxes. Seems like he That's wants my boy. the Warwick. All right. I actually do like Warwick. He got some buffs on 713. Um, you actually don't even have to build the Tiamat, although you probably will, because uh, you get to start with your Reju big so easily. But the increased clear on the Cinder Hulk, as well as the extra mana, both benefit Warwick. Uh, and I think Ooh. he'll be pretty happy with that one. This time around, Unicorns did not ban the cast it in, so TSM did not take the LeBlanc from them. And they were kind of banking on the fact that Bjergsen hasn't put in a lot of time on Cassadin, I believe, uh, by early picking that LeBlanc with the uh, Cassadin still up. Uh, the other thing we always mention is that LeBlanc still can, you know, have pressure early on a Cassadin oh, yeah. in lane, especially if, you know, they go for the two versus twos. So that's actually the funny thing now. Uh, TSM's late game, I really like it. Like, I really like the late game setup with the Castellan, mm -hmm. where for me, it's Unicorns of Love who needs to snowball early now and not go to late game, which normally is not the play style they like to uh, play. They have to actually now show a great early game. The one thing I'm seeing here, the open window for Unicorns of Love, the two versus two in a LeBlanc, uh, with a Warwick versus Cassidin and Kha'Zix. If the LeBlanc starts it off, how you want to do uh, from the bottom side, you can have LeBlanc start the initiation, chain the Cassidin. Once Warwick gets in there, you can have the fear for, even if Kha'Zix is there for a counter gank, you get both of them in the fear and you can still focus one down. I also think the top lane, if it is a 2v2 setup, is good for Unicorns of Love. But again, it so much comes down to how good is the early game. It's not been great two games in a row. They do not have the better late game combo all of a sudden against TSM. 
So TSM, TSM can actually sit back and play more passive this time around and be like, okay, Unicorns, what can you do? Game one, all over again, potentially. Let's see what Unicorns can do and whether or not they can make any of these skirmishes or ganks. God forbid tower dives work in their favor this time round. It is game three in the Rift Rivals finals between North America and Europe. TSM have outclassed UOL two games in a row and they just need one more Nexus to be claiming the title. TSM have only dropped a single game the entire tournament and looking to keep it that way as well. Let's see if they go for the same Raptor invade with multiple people trying to slow down. Zerse, the thing with Warwick is Warwick will uh, often also start on a buff with the Q. You get that percentage health damage. You can burn the buff down pretty quickly. You want to get to your uh, blood scent next. And you can have some actually very early moves. He doesn't you know, kind of have to start Raptors and actually doesn't have AOE to help with starting Raptors. Yeah, I've seen blue buff starts quite often. Like blue buff, do a Grom, but then like start going and doing like the full uh, clear or blue buff into the wolf, uh, wolf camp. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the blue buff wolf into red buff and getting out there to fight people because at level three, uh, very powerful duelist, as you said before. And especially, I have my eyes on this mid lane because it would kind of flip the entire script and, uh, you know, sort of face of the game if unicorns were the ones who go aggressive early and around mid. And that's where it's on Bjergsen to obviously not try and play aggressive early on. Cassidy, so much of it is just about, you know, trading with Q on the enemy champion and just last hitting with your auto attacks and your W for the minis and don't push the wave. Bot lane though, Unicorns are off. Fire Frost gets knocked up by the grand entrance, finds the flay though. Level 1 v level 1, it's Bio that's chunked down to 50 and double gets a little bit back and a little bit of consumables being burned through. This duo is so good at trading with uh, that deadly plumage early on. Both of them getting the attack speed buff, and you can see they got quite a significant amount of damage uh, off in that little trade. Well, let's see whether or not Samix and Hillison can use it to get an advantage. Remember last game, they were down 30 CS by five minutes. Engage goes in, Biofrost is caught out, flashes may be needed, already used, summoning right. here! First blood picked up by Hilly Sang. Double lips trying to turn around, Samax and Hilly now running for their lives. Yeah, Biofrost right here, disrespecting how strong Rakan and Zaya are, level one with that W from Zaya going on to Rakan as well. Mid lane, uh, we see just a little bit of trading and a minion chasing Exile down. Yeah, huge disrespect, and Unicorns do, with the earlier game-oriented draft, Go aggressive in the early game. Bottom lane getting first blood like that is unexpected, though. Even with that matchup, usually, especially after an early trade like Bio already took, you would see him hover back more, but he's yeah. playing so aggressively. And there's, there's just really no reason for him to actually go aggressive right there, and that's why it's so easy for Unicorn to just punish him. Double if trying to do what he can in return, but kill already secured for Samax early back. He can get then his longsword and return to lane. And meanwhile, uh, Xerxes on his Warwick here, he's just uh, clearing his entire jungle. He's not even needed for level three ganks. Exactly, feels quite good for him. Meanwhile, on the top side, Hearts are going for a trade during the exhausted mini Nar state. Definitely what you want to keep track of in those trades with the Nar. Do you see Hillisang around the mid lane? Control ward being placed as well, so kind of banking on no ward being here in the mid lane. They want oh, to get a hold flash. Hold on, hold on. Rooted in place, knocked in the air. Flash is available, not even needed. Xerxes unable to get in range and proc that fear. So three and a half minutes in, Unicorns have got first blood very early on. I'm getting flashbacks and deja vu to game one of the series, albeit the kills in a different lane. So remember last game, um, Unicorns also even got flash burned on double lift early. So they've, they've got a lot of advantages early on over the bottom lane, but double lift and Biofrost have been playing their way out of those early disadvantages so far. We'll see if they can keep it up though. Cyan Rakan, definitely a duo that can pressure that. And we'll keep our eyes on how UOL continue to adapt because they really need to work on this early to mid game transition that has fallen flat and you know Kobe in the previous game we talked about how the NA teams will be taking some experience and knowledge and development back to their own region mm -hmm. you're well in EU and G2 and Fnatic and every other team watching I really want to see what they're going to be doing and how they're going to figure up and how do they just step up how do they fix these flaws that have been exposed and 
They have a week Develop. to figure that out. For now, Unicorns of Love, they just want to win this game here and at least make sure it's not a 3-0. And they're actually off to a good start with Isaiah Rakan. We're still kind of following Xerxes. He's invaded into the jungle of this enemy. He's on a ward recalling. Uh, but good little clear for him. We'll have enough gold to also go back and get his tier mat. And he's a happy man. Yeah, very happy. And especially in this matchup, uh, even if the Kha'Zix finds you isolated, if he jumps on you, you can have your damage reduction uh, with your E and then have it go the full duration, then popping off in the fear buys you quite a lot of time. And Warwick himself can even turn those early trades around. Very good if they meet up in the one versus one. And look at that early vision even in favor of Unicorns of Love. They get the scuttle, their priority on bottom side, and that early control <laughs> ward you talked about. Yeah, always one of the problems when you have a Kassadin on your team is you can't really fight a whole lot of river vision because you're just yeah. kind of sitting there under your tower crying for help 24-7 and just saying you want to just farm. Double lift the uh, bottom lane right now. Might get caught out. Sven is coming down the river, though. They have to be careful. Biofrost does get caught. A lot of damage already down. Samex and Hilly trying to shut him down. They will get the first kill of the fight before Samex is shut down. Sven Skaren manages to leap forward, and Hilly throws down the flash. Going to look underneath the tower. Double lift. Sends out the volley. Not enough to get the kill. So despite Unicorns of Love having all the early wards here, they actually get surprised by Sven Skaring being on the bottom side, and that's why they end up trading one for one in the trade. Xerxes is only level five, no ulti yet from him. And he's just down here to protect Hillisang a little bit and make sure he doesn't die on the tower. And of course, steal away all the farm. <laughs> of course, number one jungler I mean, that priority. is what you do as a jungler. Sven Skaren, though, gonna steal away his raptor as well. He steals away his teammate's farm. So in the end, it is actually TSM that may get those rewards. They did see him walk over a ward, though. Let's see if Exile and uh, Xerxes will be able to punish him. He's activated the blood sense. Well, Guess it just fell see. off. Let's see if he wants to run down anybody. Too late. Yep, Raptor Camp's already gone. You can see Warwick stats for Xerxes. Six wins, two losses. Definitely one of his sort of signature champions here in the EULCS. Yes. And after that play, Biofrost back out to number one objective, controlling the Vizrin around the mid lane. TSM do have advantage here in the brush. Death Sentence comes down. Xerxes still no access to his ultimate. Dash over the wall for Sven Skeren. Exile forced to distort backwards. It's going to be Hilly going down, and Bjergsen gets his first kill of the game. And these are the kind of mistakes Unicorns are loft. They just can't afford to make with their composition. They end up diving in here without having level 6 on Xerxes. Eh? Everyone from TSM had already moved up to join the fight, and Hillisang just dies. The unfortunate thing there for Xerxes, he activated Bloodstone and walked so quickly towards the brush that he isolated himself from Hillisang <laughs> for the very beginning. So Sven did get an, a first empowered Q off with the isolated damage to start this trade, I believe. Yeah, the support and jungler are working together, but he's a bit too far, so big burst of damage. And then when they chase over, he does not follow. Yeah. They all get split up. TSM are 100% ready for this. They were the ones setting the play up to begin with. Exactly, and uh, Hillisang ended up using every single cooldown and obviously a LeBlanc and just distortion back to get out. But there's no way out for Hillisang once he's actually going in there, uh, meaning that he just ends up dying without really even being close uh, to getting a kill. And that's now two kills for TSM, and they suddenly even out that goal lead. Well, there we go. Even game as uh, we approach eight minutes. Caught a glimpse there of Hornsa and Chachi trading back and forth. Hornsa was looking for the barrel under the tower, but Chachi was able to hop away to safety and take a look at those stats on your screen. KDA player. Sven Skaren <laughs> has only died once this final so far and 75% kill participation. Yeah, he has absolutely been going off on this Kha'Zix pick multiple games. Going legendary, actually. Now he's invading with his top laner pushing up on top side. Even though his mid laner had recalled, still is uh, you know advisable to go for basically the first half of that invade. Don't want to overextend and go for the wolves. He just drops off extra vision, and he can try and actually affect mid lane next. I still find it super interesting how all these American junglers have actually looked, or the NA junglers, even though some of them obviously are. EU imports have looked so good in this tournament here. One of them. One of them uh, being that. Yep. That is one of them, this guy on your screen. But I mean, the NA junglers right now have just been really outplaying a lot of the European junglers this tournament. And, and it's something to go and look back at for the European teams to be like, how do we enable that jungler more? How do you make sure the jungler is actually with his mid laner, with his support, and making plays together? It's not the first time we've actually had that narrative this year. Back in spring, I am when EU representatives went over were shown up by Casa, and we heard so many stories in the spring split of how EU LCS junglers needed to learn and adapt and adjust to the jungle pathing. We'll see what they can take away 
from Rift Rivals. Hillian Samax moving forward, is looking for that grand entrance, but nothing followed. And once again, you can see if you the bottom lane here, Bilefrost, whether he's on Braum, whether he's on Thresh, he's continually waiting in brush by double lift. So Unicorns are never sure if Doublelift is, you know, pushing up by himself or if he's laning by himself. If Biofrost has slipped into the fog of war for a very long time, they have to respect his roam at the same time as his lane pressure because he has counter ganked them many oh, times. Zerxi. But well, two chains into Infinite Duress. Flash forward, Xerxy kills Bjergsen. I was just about to say we need to see something from Xerxy here with that ulti ready. You gotta start snowballing your lanes, and the fact that Bjergsen actually jumped aggressively in the mid lane allowed Exile to land the chains. All right, let's see what Svenskaren does. He actually hovered down the mid lane. Uh, he wants to clean up the extra minions here and put a stop to this pressure. Little bit of damage onto the turret, but not much. All right, Flash is used already by Hornsa. The Gnar comes out as well as a big barrel. Oh Chachi my. takes two turret shots. He's forced to run for his life, trading into minions. Warwick on the way, though. Blood sent over Hansa. He has to respect this. Even though the ultimate was used from Cersei, uh, they could go for a tower dive if Hansa was getting a bit too aggressive there. So that's why he backs off under turret just to pick up the farm. Visit Chachi's able to escape this time around. If I recall correctly, he died to expect not a week or two ago <laughs> in a very <laughs> similar true. scenario. That is true. Uh, Bjergsen used his TP back to the mid lane, didn't want to go join a fight in the top lane. Let's see if he maybe could get that kill on Mr. Chachi. Let's see if we see a Svenskian on top side. Teleport as well. Xerxes is there. No infinite duress for Xerxes. The fear not going to connect. It does right at the end. Boomerang Blade comes down. Svenskian reckons he wants this fight. Has got the leap to safety if needed. Chachi continues to chase, hops forward, gets the hyper proc. Xerxes. Not going to be able to find any more. Not enough hard CC in that lane without Meganar or Warwick's ultimate. Take a quick trade mid lane, and Exile's getting chunked down by Bjergsen. Yeah, during all these trades, too, we do have to keep in mind, you know, the goals of these two team compositions. And as Deficia was talking about super early on, the scaling this time for TSM, uh, definitely quite a bit better. And that's why Unicorns need to keep up these plays in this proactive style. Yeah, and uh, that's also why it's a bit of a problem for them. Uh, Bjergsen is now hit level 9 in the mid lane. He can actually go aggressive on Exile. He's not really under a lot of pressure. He died that one time we saw earlier against Xerxes, but whenever he sees the Warwick in another lane, he jumps Exile instantly. And that actually means now that this Kassadin has gotten past the worst point of his game, which is very, very early on. And we always know Kassadin on stage. He tends to find these openings where he gets a few kills and he gets to the late game part. Well, luckily, uh, Bjergsen's opponent Exile has got a little bit more mobility. Uh, luckily for you, well, that is. So if Doublelift tries to go NA Sniper and send those Ash Arrows down, maybe Exile can escape. And to Fisher, you used the phrase, uh, worst part of the game for Kassadin. Well, you were well at 15 minutes in both previous games. It was down 5,300 and 5,600 gold, respectively. Now they're only down 500 gold as we're getting closer to this mid game. And you have to keep your eyes on the river vision. We were giving, you know, praise to Unicorns after their bottom lane got first blood and they were pushing up that they had a lot, but TSM have oh. retaken it. All right, Quickness comes out. Death Sentence actually interrupts. Hillisang Sven is going to jump in and with the help of Double have pick up an easy kill for TSM. And not only River Vision, but also entire Red Quadrant Vision. TSM slipped through. Sven Skarin is there unannounced, able to pick up another kill on Hillisang after he goes very aggressive. TSM is just very good at predicting the place. They, they saw that one coming a mile away. You saw once again Biofrost standing so far away from Double Lift. Hillisang actually flashed in and Double Lift already clicked the land and he was out of there straight away, and Hillisang ends up then getting caught. Oh, Exile again with a double change trade. Xerxes does not pull the trigger for infinite duress under the tower. Also keep in mind, Exile was standing and tanking the entire wave right there. Bjergsen was just sitting at his tower being like, okay, I'm currently winning the trade. If you keep auto attacking me, I got the minions on my side. Dragon gets started here, by the way, Kobe. Sorry to cut you off. That'll be the 23rd of Rift Rivals for TSM. And uh, total 52 for North American LCS. And a Drake, let's take another look at this. Because, again, keep talking about Bio, slipping into the fog of war, being on the top side, away from double lift so they can get the most out of their lanterns. He even gets just outside of the knockup and, again, punishes Hilly after Unicorns go for this play. Svenskaren had been walking through the Unicorns right crotch the entire time as well, easily able to slip in for the extra kill. So 2,000 gold ahead now for TSM. Oh, Hansa tries to interrupt the jump. Does indeed. Kragus Barrel comes out, and Xerxes already left. I saw uh, Exile's Mimic clone in between two towers, 
And you're well, just fishing for opportunities, but falling slightly behind. All right, now TSM are just winning this early game through the bottom lane, with of course also Sven Skarin being around when he's needed, and that means that Bjergsen once again gets free time in the mid lane to sit and farm. Almost level 11, 2,000 gold lead for the team that is currently outscaling uh, the Unicorns of Love. So that is once again why we actually need to see Xerxe and, and Hillesang just they have to almost keep gambling and try and go for some of these really aggressive engages. The problem is just they're backfiring because once again, TSM, they know exactly where they are on the map and they're really good at actually responding. Yeah, what are they going to do? Turret dive a Kassadin that has a <laughs> constantly roaming Thresh? I, I'm actually going to check the stats after this game and, and check on Bilefrost's proximity to Doublelift because he has done a very good job denying information to Unicorns of Love. Now they're moving up the river, though. They're passing control wards, so Exile should see them. All right, double left. Can you find the Enchanted Crystal Arrow? Decides not to pull the trigger yet. But then what I want to see from Unicorns, if it's not, you know, hey, we can't really go, go mid lane, then top lane is an opening for you. Visicharchi will win the side lane split push, but Xerxe walked up there with ulti, then just stepped away because he had no vision of the rest of TSM, so he had to just play safe. He's level, level, now level 9. We've seen one ulti from him so far. We need to see more if you want to really snowball this composition, and this top lane tower is very low. There's a chance for Unicorns to pick up some gold. Right now, Exile might be under pressure, though. Taking a look for Ash. Looking for that Ash arrow that has to be the way in. He was hoping that Exile would distortion the wave to try and wave clear, and then you could obviously shoot yeah. the arrow onto him. But uh, Exile didn't do it. Yeah, that implied pressure, the implied threat of Biofrost, constantly out of vision. Going to keep them playing safe. Turret almost even going down here, but Unicorn's teleporting in. All right, Exile's going to find the charm. That's a two-man knock-up. The quickness to follow. Bjergsen's already out to the fight. Double lift fires down the arrow, catches onto Hilly as Chachi's TP kills double lift. Good pick for Unicorns. They need to get some pressure on the objective afterwards as well. Bjergsen. Oh, Bjergsen forced to flash away, but Exile traded his in reply. Sven Skeren waiting over the walls of the Raptor camp, and Horns has got a big cask waiting. Bjergsen with TP up. He's going back to base now. They we're pinging on a ward behind Unicorns, but they're not going for it. This is what we want to see, you know, some aggressive plays here. You gotta keep forcing some of these fights before TSM gets full late game. I like the engage from Unicorns of Love. Sadly for them, they only got that one kill, but they got tower at least, and now someone's fighting. Dicking around, and Hornsa kills Exile. There's the teleport you talked about as Bjergsen. Rift walks into the river. Defensive flash of Samax already. Hilly's gonna try dash to safety. Four-man stack. Gets the knock-up in, gets the flight back out. Hilly and Samax trying to get the damage down as TSM get one and then get away. See if they actually defend the top turret here. Double does move in for the minion waves, even though Unicorns of Love have the brush. Oh. How safe does he feel? Hawkshot is available, by the way. Um, oh, he, um, the, he thinks they're all back yeah, in base. He's bum, toast. Bum, bum, no flash for double lift. Looking for the knockup. Manages to find it. Unicorns kill double lift. Nice little uh, waiting game there for the Unicorns of Love. Double lift definitely expecting him back in base. Sven I don't think he can do this. No, but he's got Biofrost there and, you know, multiple escapes possible. But Rift Herald going to go down. Probably top turret can go down. Unicorns of Love pressing this mid game just as they need to. What was that term? Thanks for the leash as Unicorns yep. of Love pick up the Rift Herald. They've got one tower to their name. The second will fall. And this will keep Unicorns of Love within gold touching distance of TSM. Such a huge moment. It was TSM waiting in that brush in the mid lane, hoping they could catch Exile. So when they actually stepped into the lane, Unicorns, they were ready. TPing behind with Visit Charchi, win the fight, get mid tower as well. And then the follow up kill on double lift. So let's see it again. This after TSM stepped in towards this mid lane tower, getting a bit greedy, and instantly just get punished by Unicorns of Love. Yeah, Visichachi is on double lift right now, so there's no way he's getting out of this without summoner spells. And then, as you talked about, after the pick here, Unicorns of Love able to take down this turret. However, then TSM used a teleport of their own to get the kill back. Oh, we're back in it. We are indeed, and Bjergsen's already dead. Horns has thrown down the barrel to try and buy some time as Samix was the one that got that credit. Sven is running for his life, and TSM disengage. Oh, not going to be able to do so. No, they're not. Infinite Juress comes out. The knockup is flashed away from Bio. I think TSM are actually getting two lax. Yesterday on the desk, I said, the one thing you don't want to do against Unicorns in the mid game, send your AD carry to split push on on the side waves, because that's why charging mid works for them. Another flash use, so it's Biofrost and double lift the gnaw backwards into the blade caller route. It's a kill for Exile. The Rift Herald slams down the mid inner turret, and the Unicorns have a gold lead as we approach.
approach 20 minutes. It's all about that mid lane right now. They're just finding the picks. TSM, they walk straight into it. And then another great engage from Unicorns of Love. That's two turrets in the mid lane going down the sea. So Bjergsen jumps forward. But again, he's forgetting he's in the mid lane. And he's forgetting that they sent Double F top again. So Double F went top. He died before uh, you know they got him out of the brush. But again, as you said, they go mid lane while their AD carry is top. He cannot join. And Unicorns, that's exactly what they love. They jump on the opportunity there, going aggressive and getting some more out of that mid lane. And then TSM feels like they have to try and defend this one, despite being against a Rift held as well. And the Meganar coming off from Chachi. Great engage and even getting a flash from Dove Lift and then lands the two-man stun mm -hmm. into a great ulti. Well, that just means Unicorns take the lead. Eight kills to four, plus 2,000 gold after 20 minutes. And tournament life is on the line. This is the first time the Unicorns have had a gold lead at 20 minutes in the entirety of Rift Rivals 2017. And the one game where they really need it because they did not have the <laughs> scaling comp on their side. Obviously, the late game team fight with things like Zaya and Nor can definitely do a lot of damage, but you're always just afraid of that Cassidy. Yeah, now things get interesting here, and we do have to keep track of the setups. Lots of Unicorn Vision into the blue quadrant of TSM. Uh, and currently, they are actually grouping up back around mid once again. The Ocean Drake is available to pull them out, and he gets charmed. All right, Svenska is running for his life. No flash available to him. Void Assault will buy a few seconds Ooh. of time. Samax moves. looking the lantern from Biofrost gets Svenska into safety. Good moves, and you can see the mind games. This is something that Shaco players learned a long time ago, but right before you go invisible, walk the direction you are not going to run after you use your invisibility uh, skill, and he's able to juke them for just long enough there. There's a Chachi trading very happily into Hornsey here. Got that Warden's Mail, a little bit of armor, and Xerxes as it stands, he's now going to look for the dragon. Okay, double lifts the target, no flash, remember. Visit Chachi was able to bait that earlier. Yeah, now TSM just falling apart because there's so much mobility on the side of Unicorns of Love with LeBlanc and Rakan in here. So whenever a no flash AD carry steps forward in any lane, well, he might get jumped instantly. Great reaction from Unicorns of Love, and it's all just based around them pulling the trigger. All right, well, now we have to worry about the teleports coming in as well as Hanzo's getting very low under his turret. TSM are here. Xerxes, infinite race over the wall, uses that one defensively. The tower still lives. If I look at the minimap, Bjergsen and Exile trading in the top lane. And as it stands, Samak's just farming mid lane. So you are well. They keep their gold lead and they're spreading TSM across the map, spreading them quite thin as it stands. I mean, they want to keep finding double lift as well. Make sure you can never actually get any farm in any lanes. Right now, though, it is just a full reset. Everyone going back to base from the Unicorns of Love. You got to get your items, not your control wards. That's, of course, important to highlight. Pretty funny that uh, TSM now need to reset their mindset, right? Because the last two games have been smashing, just overwhelming advantages for them that they haven't wor had to worry about defensive vision, about having to reset up, uh, you know, the, those tools so that, so that they can safely farm the lanes. You know, step number one wasn't really a worry before, but now it is, uh, and it should, you know, be on their radar after Double Oath has died three times in a row. And it's nice to see the Unicorns when they have the opportunity can show a measure of control. We wanted to see it in game two of this series, but TSM never gave them a chance. TSM had the tower dive that strangled the life out of UOL in that game. Now let's see what UOL's mid game is like. They've got a small lead, they've got a mid game team composition, which we talked about a little bit, and they are starting to pull TSM around the map, but flashes are becoming available, so that opens up opportunities for TSM. And they have Samax sitting right now with four kills already completed two full items and has a BF sword as well coming in. So extremely strong on his side. Very hard for Doublelift to actually deal damage in these fights because he's playing an AD carry with no sort of mobilities against things like a Mega Nar, things like a Warwick that can very easily actually get to him. So he most of the time will probably just be running away and trying to land like long range volleys. Samix should be able to play more aggressive in the, in the fights here. Has been on the front line a lot. I'm looking at teleports, by the way, all four are available. Looking at vision. Unicorns of Love invading into the darkness. A little bit risky here, but they've got numbers advantage, and Chachi's got that TP up, which I mentioned. The problem for Unicorns, though, is they've placed all the control wards at the Baron itself, so they can't actually deny a whole lot of TSM vision in here. You can see a lot of wards being placed, though, by TSM, so they actually know, okay, you're sitting in that brush, or you're sitting near the red buff. Now they're with the Sweeper. They do actually take one of the wards out, and they're trying to just 
make sure that no one knows what's happening and maybe Barony started, maybe they're hiding somewhere, you don't actually know. Yeah, the benefits of, you know, using oh, Ash that one's and, awarded. and he having one of those AD carries with less mobility is that he does have the hawk shot and is helping another form of checking the Baron for vision. But uh, slowly but surely, you need to move up the ward line through the red quadrant to gain vision of those corridors leading up to it. And it's a little bit too easy for Svenskaren to walk in and place a ward here, simply based on the fact that the Unicorns, again, did not fully deny all the vision here. And TSM actually kind of knew exactly where they were with that ward near the red buff. And they are easily able to stop the Baron. Meanwhile, mid lane fights. All right, Lantern to safety once again. Looking at the itemization really quickly, by the way. Two items on the way for Exile as he gets chunked down by the Lich Bane, fully stacked rower of Bjergsen. Ash Arrow caught the Mimic. I think that was the ultimate of LeBlanc, is now Sven Skeren. He's oh, looking Samux. for Samux. Samux with the Feather Storm, forced to flash to safety. A great gnaw! Buys enough time for Samux to escape. Haunts' barrel was better! Sven Skeren gets the first kill, followed quickly by Double Lift. Bjergsen, another for Sven Skeren. TSM, Ace, Unicorn! Clean Ace, and that's going to be Baron TSM! Looking to put North America on the top. Hansa, the hero, manages to bounce Unicorns away. And the Unicorns of love lose Baron, lose control. And they're in a game where their opponents scale. That might, might yeah. lose them the game. All that hard work here from the Unicorns of love, it does not pay off because they end up going right back into the mid lane. Looking for another fight. He's actually fine with the clone take, in the air. Take a here. look at Double F's early flash here. As soon as he sees the quickness activated by Hilly, he knows it's coming. It's also about Samux, though, being so far forward here. So he's forced to use everything defensively. And now with the Gragas coming in, it's so easy for Hanser just to land it on multiple members. Exactly. Hanser there even survives the entire engagement afterwards, healing back up. TSM now with a very big opportunity to get more from Unicorns. I think that Megana also from Chachi only actually hit Hanser and then some minions that got pushed into the wall. All the carries from TSM were still standing far enough away, so they weren't actually touched by it. Suddenly there's no CC because Hillisang had used everything at the start of the fight. All right. Uh, there's a Chachi wants to try to chase him down, Kobe. No, Kobe, you can take it. Is, uh, no. He has failed. Yep. Let hey! me update you on the status <laughs> of chasing down Bjergsen. <laughs> They're trying again. Nope, failed again. It's just the distortion <laughs> that jumped in. Team Solo mid, 2,000 gold in the lead. I'm going to go back to something we were talking about a little bit earlier. Unicorns of Love, they showed some growth in this game, but now they have to bounce back from behind. They have to deal with this Baron empowered TSM. And Lantern from Double Lift doesn't get the tower quite. A few more hits will take it down. Yeah, a few more hits on that one. Bjergsen can take up the top side one as well. Talking about that Baron power play and how much TSM have the opportunity to get here from Unicorns. Tremendous amount of uh, real estate on Summoner's Rift. Ocean Drake coming up in a couple seconds as well. Might be a key point. Teleport's available for Bjergsen if a fight continues to break out. Sven Skeren and Hornsa looking for some targets. Yeah, they have Baron buffs, so they just want to delay for their split pusher. Bjergsen right now, tremendous pressure on the top side. He has teleport available. It's, all the cards are, are TSMs right now. It, it's just up to them playing them correctly. That's uh, the problem, obviously, for Unicorns of Love. They were kind of relying on them not having, you know, a bad fight or making a mistake around Baron, and suddenly they get that ba bad fight here. TSM, they get right back into the game, multiple kills on their side, and they pick up the Baron buff that actually Unicorns of Love needed to start closing out the game. And that's where suddenly you can see it right in front of you. You're so close, you're almost feeling it, and then everything, everything just gets taken away. Unicorns of Love, by the way, got a total 10 kills in their two previous games. They get one more, they will equal it. Unfortunately, though, they ain't going to be very difficult. That's a good stun into double lift. He's able to QSS his way to safety. Infinite Duress comes up. It's a fight on two fronts. Horns is down on the side of TSM, but the four-man stack is flying forward. TSM have lost a second. Spence Karen's out. Samix is still relatively untouched. Now he's getting oh, hammered down. It. Blade Caller comes out as Bjergsen rift walks to safety. Xerxes gets caught by the death sentence. Buys a couple times. Samix gets the kill, though, and Bio's going to be the next target. Hilly will have his cooldowns available soon as Bjergsen waits in the wings. He stood right on top of a ward, though, and forced to run away. Teleport coming out from exile into the mid lane. Yeah, not only the ward, but blood scent. You can't hide from that. Xerxes on the trail. Oh, and Alanzo, no, just takes the gate. 
Going to look for an engage, decides Cheeky. to bounce away. Exile, how confident is he feeling? Decides against it. All right, you get your kills right there, Trevor, for Unicorns of Love. 12th now in this game. Samax 7 on, sitting with 7 here on this uh, Zaya. Let's see what happens in the fight. So, good engage from Hillis hang on to double lift. And then the ulti from Xerxe, I believe it just misses a double lift right there. Meanwhile, the Hanzo is on the tower, so he can't really stay alive. Yeah, Hanzo is taking the turret as well. Uh, as the rest of the Unicorns, DPS. So he goes down very quickly. And TSM, unable to get that counter kill onto Exile, was huge. He gets just barely out. So the fact that uh, Unicorns can just they kind of jump in and out of tower range. Whenever they feel like, okay, I'm on the threat step under the tower, TSM can't really chase under. They were fighting just outside of it, making it hard for TSM to do anything. Yeah. Regardless, though, because TSM had pushed up so heavily, uh, there was no extra objective there for Unicorns. Even after they win the fight, the Drake will go over to TSM. And you can see in that fight right there, 48 damage from Xerxes. Uh, ulti just missed. It looked like. Uh, QSS was uh, obviously used by Doublelift earlier. And that means TSM get their second dragon of the game. They still maintain control of the game, but slight reset here. Um, Unicorns, after 30 minutes, they had lost both previous games by this point. Now they need to claw back some of this lead, and their composition can do well. They gotta be very careful with how and where they pick their fights. They're trying to preemptively get some pressure on mid and top here to kind of deny or force TSM back from their split push because Bjergsen is gonna try and split push all day here. And uh, it does not work as they invade into the jungle and have to recall back to deal with it anyway. Bjergsen's still probably gonna claim his prize. So easily takes down the tower. And you know, all week long, I've heard Deficio backstage saying, you know, Kassadin just works on stage, man. Kassadin on every stage is, is a different beast to every other Kassadin in solo queue or elsewhere. I mean, it's just, I, I feel so often with Western teams on stage, it's rare you have games where teams can, you know, snowball on the Kassadin in the early game and then cleanly close out the game before Kassadin gets to, like, see strong team fighting. So often in almost every Western game I watch, there is some mistakes where Kassadin has a way back in the game. Yeah, and I think it was also possible this game, but as you said in that team fight much earlier on, the, the main one in the mid lane that started all off, where Samix went too deep into the TSM lineup and Haunter came around to punish them, that was really the big turning point. Samix right now is the damage output for Unicorns of Love. You know, with this Infinity Edge build, he's got the seven kills, all the crits coming through. He has to be the one to play their team fight specifically uh, very well. And it's so hard for him because he's against so many things that, that's trying to basically jump him over and over. That's kind of thing with Kassadin, is when he jumps in your face, you always want to just target him straight away. But then he has Hourglass, he flashes out or jumps out with his ulti the second time. And then you just divert all this damage towards him while there's still four other guys you have to deal with on the side of TSM. Uh, but still, could be very even team fights if Samax can do well. Yeah, and TSM were actually setting up for that one. Bile uh, trying to get Exile as he goes back to Distortion, but a little bit early means there Jack will be behind no him. engage. He's Mega. Mega Nah manages to connect Svenskeren against the wall. The lantern's taken by Hornsa. Svenskeren's out the fight, but there's damage onto Bjergsen. He goes golden with the hourglass. Samax puts down the feather storm into nothing. TSM have already disengaged. Nobody's died yet. Double lift is actually playing it so well. He hits the arrow too. Exile was stunned up for a few seconds up on the front line. All of a sudden, Xerxes getting more than 48 damage this time round. They trade mid laner for support. Bjergsen stays alive. This gets Cassidy, away. Man. TSM are winning this fight. Unicorns almost managed to chain CC to Kassadin, but he got the outlast off Samax to life. He is indeed. Look at the damage coming down from Double Lift, though, as Samax gets shut down by TSM. And suddenly you lose that fight. It's the same thing. You look at a Kassadin, you want to kill him. He gets the outlast off. He's jumping out. That was almost everything invested by Unicorns on him. And suddenly then Double Lift can turn the fight around with the rest of TSM. That's key. Double Lift on this ass, which you talked about, he was going to have such a difficult time with all the ways that Unicorns can die him, but Bjergsen takes the point. He goes in on Kassadin with the Zonias. Uh, he takes a bunch of the, you know, aggression. Svenskeren as well on the opposite side had to jump out and double up. Can, he keeps up his DPS working around those cooldowns. You have to track those crowd control abilities. Vizichachi going to start out here and Sven has to get out of the corner. Yeah, and that's already a problem now for Unicorns that the big Meganar is used here on tanks. But look at this. Just getting the hourglass in time. Jumps out, flashes away. A lot of cooldowns used right now on Kassadin and suddenly 
TSM with Hansa in the front line can actually turn around and now go aggressive again. And then Double Lift hits the arrow for the follow up here. They get the re engage. Cast it in part two. Bjergsen goes in. He gets a huge amount of damage and barely got out of that one on the side. No extra damage there during the infinite duress, and he still lived. At the very end, they also get the kill on Samax. But really, also the start here with Visichachi. Flash available, good flank setup, but then he only gets that Omega now on, the, on both the Kha'Zix and the Gragas. And not able to get on to someone like Double Lift or Bjergsen with it means that TSM's carries, they do stay alive. Well, it's 10,000 gold almost for TSM in the lead. Uh, gentlemen, do you remember when TSM's last international BO5 was? Shall I tell you? Um, it was in 2015, Intel Extreme Masters World Final. And it was the last time they got a 3-0 as well. They're on the verge of doing it again against Europe. However, Samux has something to say about it before Hillisan gets shut down. Featherstorm goes out, and despite losing a member early, TSM are putting it back on UOL. Xerxes running for his life as Bjergsen uses the hourglass under the tower. Death sentence onto Samux may sentence UOL Whoa, to Bjergsen. death. Exile gets one back before being shut down himself and TSM have long death timers to work with. They've got three members here with only Samix standing in their way. Two Nexus turrets to go down. The Nexus turrets are falling. First is the victim. Baron empowered minions. They've got to deal with Samix. The death sentence might just be it. Yes, it is. Double lift secures the ace as the Nexus turrets slowly take it Hill down. Is now up. They've got another challenger to approach, but it's just the support. Is yeah, there's too many minions. There's too much damage. And on this day, your Rift rival champions, TSM, declare NA greater than EU. And they will return to North America a very happy team. Hard work paying off, improvements in their mid game, improvements yep. in their coordination, improvements in their shot calling. TSM only drop a single game here at Rift Rivals. I think just the, that coordination point is just so key with Sven Skeren and Biofrost, Sven Skeren and Bjergsen as well. Them always managing to coordinate these plays. Early on, just none of the European teams had an answer against the mid lane pressure with the jungler as well from TSM. Exceptional performance. The undoubtable best team from groups. The undoubtable best team in the finals. The undoubted best team in the West. Proven in the finals. Rift rival champions. Ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for your Rift Rivals champions, TSM! While NA teams will be taking back jubilation, growth, development, a hell of a lot of bragging rights, EU goes back to the drawing board and figures out what the hell we're doing wrong? A lot of things, it seems, right now. But yes, that is something for the European teams to look at. A lot of pressure to North America. They came in here and they looked way better than the European teams. Definitely excited to see what TSM, Phoenix One, and Cloud9 look like next week in the North American LCS. And what Immortals and CLG have to say about it. They have better have used that extra week of practice well because the teams here they that came to the Rift EU Rivals, teams. They're trying to pick up some of those strategies. Yes. Huge smiles on the side of TSM. And you know what? That was a difficult game three. They were behind. Yeah. There was struggles, but TSM didn't it, it didn't really feel like they were ever at threat, despite being behind in control at times. I mean, but that's where you know that this team was just a step above the rest, because even when they were under pressure, it never felt like they just fell apart completely. Like, they lost a few kills here and there, then figured out, okay, Unicorns of Love, they need to make some of these plays right now to actually win the game, and then they actually had an answer. Won some of those fights, Cassidy got to three items, and Bjergsen was in and out of these fights, buying time, and I think just TSM, very well-rounded team, that showed a lot of promise with early game, but also once we saw some of these team fights here.
Oh, just great performance overall. And man, so many question marks left unanswered. Like, came into this event with a lot of expectations and they were flipped on their head. We walk away with now, what do they do back in NA, these three squads that showed up in EU? Where does Phoenix 1 go? Oh, they were in out number eight last week. Kobe, you're pointing up, all the way up. Do they make playoffs again? Do, do they contest for semifinals again? I mean, playoffs seems so like a very, questions. very realistic goal for Phoenix 1 at this point. I just really hope right now for the European teams that while, of course, losing this tournament really sucks for a lot of them and for all the fans, hopefully they are actually learning a lot and maybe realizing that some of these unique strategies that we see from certain yep. European teams at an international level might not always be the best because we saw them actually being super exposed. Yes, I mean, we've seen uh, members of Fnatic talking about their style. If it doesn't work against NA teams, it's not going to work against Korea. We Pretty saw safe to say. Perks saying that if they go 1-5 and five here, it's better than going 1-5 and five in Worlds, for example. Like, there's huge, huge problems to work out. Talking about huge problems and huge things to happen, TSN, they had a huge comeback team fight thanks to Haunts' Gragas Barrel. And this is brought to you by Acer. As he gets chunked down by the Lich Bane fully stacked rower of Bjergsen. Ash Arrow caught the Mimic. I think that was the ultimate of LeBlanc is now Sven Skeren. He's oh, looking Samux. for Samux. Samux with the Feather Storm. Forced to flash to safety. A great gnaw. Buys enough time for Samux to escape. Hans's barrel was better. Sven Skeren gets the first kill. Followed quickly by Double Lift. Bjergsen, another for Sven Skeren. TSM, Ace, Unicorn. Clean Ace and... And, and what, God. Kobe? Oh, no, what? I'm Kobe. What did you say? Spoiler, TSM <laughs> wins! <laughs> oh, we're just busy getting set up for the interview. And while we do, uh, a lot to reflect on. A lot to reflect on. I was absolutely enthralled by the games. I was disappointed by the results. I'm not even going to lie. But, like I said, it just sets us up. The amount of hype and banter and... and uh, I mean, it can only go downhill from here for North America now, you know? <laughs> they, they just peaked at Rift Rivals. Can they do it at Worlds? Who knows? If EU beats them there, suddenly turn it around. <laughs> what, what was Byron saying? Say. He can't remember the last time NA won something. Uh, and this is now weird. Bragging rights. NA versus EU. Kobe, what do you think? I think uh, things are looking great for North America. I'm also North American now. There we, there there we go. go. There we well, go. Welcome on, on, buddy. On yeah. that bombshell, TSM are the winners of Rift Rivals 2017. Let's check in with Dracos for a word of their jungler and mid laner.